We have seen how procedures are types of subroutines that go away and bring nothing back to the main program. Another type of subroutine is a function. A function is a piece of code that goes away and does something and brings something back to where it is being used. Imagine you are given some money and told to go to the cinema and bring back the change. You are going away with some money given to you as a parameter. You go away, see a film, buy some popcorn and you are left with some change. When you come back, you give the change back to whoever gave you the money. This is called returning a value. You are bringing or returning something back. Let's look at a function that will do some simple maths. It will add two numbers together and return the answer. Let's look at the Python code line by line. The first line is identical to defining a procedure. In Python, the only difference between the two is that the function will return a value. Next, we have created a local variable called result and stored in it the result of adding our two parameters together. Line 3 has the really important bit of code that makes this a function. The keyword return indicates that this is a function and we are returning the contents of our result variable to where the function was called. Line 4 is back in our main program. Here we are calling the function add and passing to it its parameters, the numbers 4 and 5. The return value of the function is being stored in another variable called output. Finally, we print out the value returned by the function. We've seen what subroutines are, including the two different kinds, functions and procedures. But why do we use subroutines at all? Well, using subroutines in your program has several advantages. Breaking down your bigger program into smaller subtasks, decomposition, makes the problem easier to solve. Each subroutine can be tested separately to make sure it works. Your subroutines can be used as many times as you like, so you only have to write it once. You can put subroutines together into a library like a module. Several programmers can work on different subroutines at the same time, so the code will be written faster. And it is easier to find code in subroutines rather than a whole program so maintenance and fixing of code can be faster. This all makes mastering subroutines an essential skill for a programmer. We can use subroutines to implement a structured approach to programming. In an earlier lesson, we learned about decomposition, where we break down a problem into its simplest form. Well, structured programming works in a similar way, breaking our problems into their smallest form and implementing them each as separate subroutines. This way our program is broken up into separate individual modules that can be independently tested, making identifying bugs much easier. Another feature to structured programming is that each subroutine must have a well-documented interface. What does a well-documented interface mean though? Basically, this means that the data your subroutine will need to use or output will be defined in the subroutine's parameters and return values. This makes it much easier to understand a program as each subroutine will show what data it is processing in the parameters and what it is returning in the return value. A final aspect to structured programming is that the program flow will be only made up of sequence selection, iteration and recursion. We've learned about sequence selection and iteration in this course already and recursion is outside of the remit of this course. You might wonder, what else is there for controlling program flow? Well, for example, once upon a time programs would often make use of go-to commands that would skip your program to a certain line of code. This would not be acceptable in structured programming. Structured programming has all the same advantages of subroutines as a whole. It is just that our whole program will be taking advantage of these benefits by breaking the entire program into these subroutines. Python has many built-in functions and procedures, some of which you have already seen. Another function that we haven't looked at yet is a random number generator. For example, in Python we will write this. 
this would return a random integer between 1 and 10. Here is some example code that will create 6 random numbers between 1 and 10. Let's look at the key parts of this Python code. First of all on line 1 we have a special bit of code. You see the random number generator functions are not available to Python by default. Instead they are found in a Python module, a collection of functions you can use. So this line of code will import the module containing the random number generator functions so they are available to your program. The next key bit of code for generating a random number is on line 3. This creates a random number between 1 and 10 and stores it in a local variable named number. It's not just random integer numbers of course. We can generate random float values too. So, functions are a type of subroutine that return a value to the main program. A function, when it is defined, must contain the word return. The word return defines the value to be returned to the main program. The return value can be stored in a variable for later use. Subroutines make it easier and faster to write, debug and maintain code. A random number generator will create random numbers between an upper and lower value. In Python, random number generators are found in the random module. You need to import the random module into your code before you can use it.